and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm wanting to share with you how I help control tomato blight. Whether it's early blight or late blight in your tomatoes, they either one of them can be a huge burden and a serious problem. Some signs to look out for if you're worried about blight in your garden is leaves that have brown or black spots on them, lesions where the plant is just dying on the stem or the leaf, and it can even work its way into the fruit. So it is important that if you see any leaves that are brown or yellow or discolored in any way, to remove them immediately and dispose of them in the trash, not in your compost. Tomato blight is found anywhere and everywhere. It lives in the soil, it lives in the air, it travels through the air and the rain and the soil. So it is inevitable that if you grow tomatoes, you will end up with tomato blight at some point. So the biggest challenge that we have as tomato enthusiasts is how to prevent or try to prevent tomato blight from taking over before our harvest is ready. There are a few things you can do to help prevent your tomatoes from getting blight. One is to make sure that they have plenty of air circulation in between the plants so that they don't become stagnant air in between where the spores can travel from plant to plant easily. So the example you see behind me is probably not the best conditions to prevent blight because I have not pruned off my lower limbs yet. I will be doing that today. Pruning the lower limbs on your tomato plants all the way up for about a foot of the lower part of the plant is best, if not more. Um, and that what that does is it prevents any splashback. So any water or rain that falls on the soil and creates a splash, when it does that, the soil lands on the lower leaves and it brings those spores from the, the blight right in direct contact to your plant, which is going to make it have blight. And blight is in your soil. It is in everybody's soil. So you, there's no way to prevent that. There's no way to get rid of it, but there are ways to help keep your plants safe from that blight. So one of the ways is to prune all of the lower leaves. The next is to mulch. If you put a layer of mulch between the soil and the air, then that helps prevent that splash as well. So that can be a huge advantage. Plus, tomatoes love mulch anyway, so it's a great idea to do in your garden anyway, is to mulch everything, <laughs> really. I don't think there's anything that doesn't like mulch. Another thing you can do is to train your tomato plants with poles and string to help keep them up off the ground so that they don't touch the ground anywhere. And you can do that with tomato cages or with a um, fence. If you have a fence, a piece of fence material like hog wire or a cattle panel, anything like that that you can attach the tomato and tie it to and grow it up um, off of the ground is best. I'm going to use the Florida weave, which is putting a post about every fifth plant or so and then taking my natural twine and I weave it in between the plants and then tie it to the stake and weave it in between the plants and tie it to the stake and I do that as the plant grows I'll do it again and again and again so that the plants will have support all the way up. So I'm hoping today to remove the lower leaves, remove some of the lower suckers and to string them up. I don't know if I'll get that far, but I'm hoping to. So about three or four years ago in Georgia, we had a July where literally every day in July it rained. There were three days, I think, total for the entire month where there wasn't an actual rainstorm. So that July that it rained every day was extremely difficult for all the farmers in Georgia. In fact, every farmer I know said they did not get a tomato harvest that year. A few people got a few hybrid tomatoes that were resistant to the blight, but with all that rain, there was no fighting the blight. Except for one smart young farmer. I say young, yeah, in, in my 30s still, but you know. I can call myself young. But one that I know of myself um, that knew about a product that helped them 
prevent the blight from coming in and used it religiously was me. And what I used was this product right here. I will advertise the crap out of this stuff because I believe in it. And I have very few products I use in my garden that I really believe in and really, really would recommend to other people because I try not to use products. I try to use just natural methods and not worry about using any other things. But this is a natural. It is an organic. It is OMRI approved and it is a natural bacteria and let me see it's serenade garden disease control concentrate there we go i was trying to find the active ingredient because look at that it is a strain of bacillus which is the same as what we use well it's not the same it is a different kind but it is um a related bacteria to what we use for fighting the cabbage moth so applying this plant this to your plants you have to coat the entire leaf top and bottom religiously you have to keep applying it and you have to do it after it rains and you have to keep doing it and keep doing it and what it does is it prevents the blight from taking over now it doesn't do it without with, it, there's not a hundred percent guarantee that's what i'm trying to say i guess um it's not going to 100 percent knock out the blight but it kept it knocked back enough that we had a tomato harvest that July and we were so grateful for that and the chef that we worked for was very grateful for that as well because he was able to put heirloom tomatoes as a plate on his menu for the entire month of July because we had so many tomatoes coming in so I was very glad that I had found this product and used it all right that's enough product endorsement let me um and no I'm not being paid to endorse them or getting anything they don't even know i just said that so um let me get to work here i've got to prune off these lower limbs and hopefully get things situated here wish me luck before i start look at my hands okay i'm about to show you what happens to rose when she works on her tomato plants these are my before hands where do you see my tomato hands Okay, so the first step is to remove all the lower pieces. And what I'm doing is I'm taking off entire leaves. This is just one leaf. That's what tomato leaves look like. And I'm also removing any suckers below that level. This is a sucker. It's multi-branched. What I'm doing with these suckers is I'm going to take off the lower sets of leaves. And I'm putting them into a jar of water and I am going to root them and they will become my late in the season tomato plants now with that being said little suckers like this I'm not gonna bother saving they're they're just you know gonna be harder to try to keep alive something like this isn't too bad size so I just remove those lower leaves and put it in the water and if I have any friends that need tomato plants and if they want the exact kind that I have this is a great way to share those tomato plants with others so I'm going to remove all of these leaves and I'm going to dispose of them not in the garden so I'm making a pile here beside me that I will come back and remove so that if there was any tomato blight on that plant it would now be out of my garden so you see i've removed all stems i could have cut that a little lower i'll probably go back and cut that any suckers that can be pinched off i want to go at least a foot off the ground so i'm taking it all the way up to there and i could go even higher but this plant has only that much more growth on top so i'm going to leave that for now and then I'm gonna to move to the next plant and the next plant and the next plant and we're gonna go all the way down the road doing this.
that right there is how it needs to look. You want to see right through your plants. Good airflow and no splashback is going to really help prevent some blight. And I'm going to actually get some more mulch and layer that under the plants as well. So I mentioned that it's summer break for my older kids, so I was super lucky to have um, Dalton watch the little ones while I was able to do this. All I had to do was put Liam down for a nap, hand him the baby monitor, and he just hung out and did his own thing until Liam got up and then he hung out with Liam. So I was able to get all of this done and now Ryan's home and he's working on chicken chores and I'm trying to get the last little bit done. I guess I may not get to stringing them up today, but I did get them all pruned, every last one of them. So all 300 tomato plants are pruned. So that's good and a good feeling. And I have way too many cuttings. So for any of the suckers that were big sized and healthy looking, I put them in a bucket of water. I'm not labeling them. I'm not pampering them. I literally am just going to put them in a bucket of water and put them in the shade because I don't have time to mess with trying to propagate more tomatoes, but I know that some of them will root and I'll be able to use them. So it's, you know, we'll see they may just rot. They may just go in the compost, but I was cutting them off anyway, so I might as well put them in water. And now I get to show you my tomato hands. So I've often been called the tomato queen because I have been growing tomatoes for a very long time. My entire life, in fact, literally. Like, I went from growing tomatoes with my mom to having them on my patio when I lived in an apartment and couldn't have a garden. So I've never had a year where I didn't grow, where I didn't grow tomatoes. And this is what happens when you prune tomatoes. This is tomato dirt. I don't know what it is about the sticky character of the tomatoes that does this, but they're sticky and they turn my fingers black and green. And it's really funny because when Rowan was born, my boss called me back into work when I was on maternity leave with him and he was just like two weeks old, I think. Maybe not even. And she had a disease issue in the garden that she couldn't figure out and she didn't know what to do. So she begged me to just come in and clock in with the baby and just go and walk around with her and tell her what needs to be done so that she can have somebody else do it. And I had him in my ergo baby carrier and that ergo baby carrier has this all over the outside of it. No matter how many times I wash it, it's covered in tomato dirt because I was pruning tomatoes while I was there. I just couldn't stop myself. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, look at all of these that need to be pruned. And so I was pruning and training tomatoes as I had a little newborn baby on my belly. So those are some good memories of my ergo covered in tomato. I love gardening with the babies. It's great. I've always done it and I always will. And I've got Liam here. He's helping me. Right, Liam? He got up from his nap, so his daddy brought him out. And now I am going to clean up my mess and take these tomato cuttings and put them in the barn so they won't be in direct sunlight. And everything looks really good. I didn't see any pest or disease issues. And I did see one um, tomato hornworm that was this big. Like not even, it was tiny. So I do have to watch out for those because boy, will they eat a tomato plant down. Aha, look, itty bitty cucumber seedling. How exciting is that? Already here, we've had rain every day since I put these seeds in the ground and that is really helping them. Yay, I'm so excited y'all, I can't wait. I hope y'all have learned something from today's video and I hope that you like, share, comment down below, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.